So we got one more concept of stops, little bit advanced stops, like in our previous case we have seen stops, stops, what it is exactly it is going to do. If you just remember, uh, we discussed that stop. If you have some external routes coming from here, now these external routes will be going through the OSPF domain and once it reaches the border router of the stop, in my scenario I am going to make this area as a stop and to, from the border router when it is advertising to internal routers, it's going to stop your LSA files nothing but it's going to stop your E1, E2 routes right and then in, to the internal routers it is going to just advertise the default route right so that's what we have discussed in case of OSP of stops right so all the internal routers inside my OSP of domain will have will have a simple uh, simple default route instead of external routes so which means there is no external routes into my OSP of domain now OSP of totally stop is a little bit far better or far advanced than stops. Now in OSP of totally stop, what it is going to do is it is going to stop LSA 3 as well as LSA 5. So which means it is going to not only stop OE1, OE2, also it is going to replace OIR routes with a single default rule. It is going to replace OE1, LSA 5, LSA 3 into a single default rule. So which means if you just go back to the normal routing table what we discussed in the previously without stops normally you have some O routes, you have some OA routes, you have some E1, E2 routes and O routes if I just take 100, 100, 100 everywhere 100 but external let's say 200 how many O routes I have in my area 100 within my stop area by default and how many OIS 300 and then how many EHRP or RIP external routes 200. So now if I make it as totally stop, in case of total stop, I'm going to make this area as a totally stop. So it's going to replace all your external routes just like I discussed. It's not only going to replace external routes, also it is going to maintain receive OIA routes. Because if you see here from this router, from this router here. I got one router here from this router if you want to go to any other area any other area either it can be area 0 or it can be area 20 or area 30 wherever you want to go outside the area you have to go via which router area. you have to go via area border router so which means area border router says that if you want to go to any other area router also not only to external routes even if you want to go to any external router external even into routes or even you want to go to any OIA routes, maybe this area, this area, or this area, it says that I'm the one who will take you to the other area also. So which means I'm the one who is going to maintain the specific routes instead of instead of OIA, instead of E1, instead of E2. And then to the internal routers, it is going to simply advertise the default route. Now the only difference between the stub and total stub is stub replaces OE1, OE2 in a technical terminology if you say replace with a single default route in all the internal routers whereas in case of totally stub the concept is a little bit advanced in totally stub we are not only replacing OE1, OE2 but also we are replacing the OIA routes LSA3 advertisements into a single default route. That is O asterisk I here. So this is my normal routing table. After configuring the total stub, my routing table looks something like this. My routing table will be normally like O routes, same as 100, no change in that. But instead of OIA, instead of E1, E2, I'm going to have one single default route. So instead of E1, E2, I'm going to have one single default route. That's it. So if you see the size of the routing table, it's completely optimized a completely very small routing table and very less information is present in the routing table which is more suitable in the low end series routers low end series routers so we are going to reduce the size of the routing table also reducing the overhead on these routers which is going to make uh, which is going to ensure that all your internal routers they don't maintain each and every route of any other area or any other external routes they just have a default route which points towards the border router and that border router is going to maintain a more individual specific routes. 
So that's that's the difference between OSPF stops and total stops. These are the two concepts which are widely adopted, widely used, where you can make a specific area as a stop. And remember, here we are making a specific area as a stop, not a single router. The complete area will be referred as a stop. If I configure total stop, there's a little bit advanced. Instead of E1, E2, also we have OIA replaced with a single default router.